hope you're all well. So today I've got a, another Cricut Community project for you. So I will link to it in the description below and you'll be able to come straight into Design Space. Now it is a knife blade project. You're probably getting sick of these. We've only got one more of these to go and then that's going to be it for the knife blade for a while. So today we're actually going to create a jewellery box. Now it doesn't have to be a jewellery box, it's just a box, but I'm using them as jewellery boxes. Now in Design Space I've made two templates for you, so there's one for balsa or basswood at 1 16th. And then there's also one for Cricut chipboard at 2mm as well. And these are exact measurements, so you don't want to be messing with these because they do fit absolutely perfectly. So you can see that we've got a lid here. Now there's two parts to the lid. There's the top bit and then there's a second smaller piece. And this will help to create a lip on the lid so it sits perfectly on our jewellery box. We've then got our base and then we've got two long sides the same and two short sides the same. And then we've also got some dividers as well. So you can add these in and kind of make it how you want it to look on the inside. Now here in the UK, in terms of balsa and bass, I have been getting strips, and I will link to them below, of balsa wood that are 4 inches in width. So this has been made to work with those. I haven't been able to find anything of a larger width, um, which is a little bit tricky at times, but it is what it is, so we'll just have to live with it. But as I say, these are the sizes and I've worked them all out and I will link to the materials below. So in terms of the cut times, with the balsa, it is a complete cut time of 25 minutes. So that's for our actual box. And then two of the dividers is an extra five minutes on top of that. Now I haven't cut using the bass because I currently don't have any bass at 1 16th but it, you want to allow an extra kind of 10 to 15 minutes on top of that. And then for the Cricut chipboard to cut the box it's approximately 1 hour and 45 minutes to completely cut it and then for the inserts two of those is an extra 7 minutes. In terms of the chipboard, I do advise keeping a close eye on it. My chipboard, I'm using the Cricut chipboard, and I don't know why, one time it will take the full 20 passes, and then other times it's cutting out completely between sort of 12 and 15 passes. So you do want to be there, you do want to keep checking it, you do want to make sure you know that it's cutting and that it's not lifting up from the mat. So you do want to be able to keep an eye on that. Now when you click on the link below, it will bring you into Design Space. All you need to do is come in and ungroup it. You can then work out your how you want to colour code it, what mats you want them to be on. You can do all of that. As I say, you don't need to resize it or anything. And in fact, I recommend not resizing because it will offset them slightly. So once you've got it how you want it in terms of your mat and your colours, you can then go to make it. Depending on if you're cutting it in balsa or chipboard, you are going to want to come in and make sure that your virtual mat is the same as your actual mat. So you are going to want to play with it slightly. And of course, the chipboard is 11 by 11, and then the balsa woods are coming in about four inches wide. So you just need to sit and work out how it's best going to work for you. If you're going to cut out in chipboard, then you want to use the Cricut Heavy Chipboard setting. And if you're going to cut out in balsa or basswood, you'll want the balsa or basswood 1 16th setting. We're actually going to cut both of these out today. I've 
got my two long sides and then my two shorter sides. I've got my bottom piece. I've then got my larger top piece and my smaller top piece which will sit on top of it to create a lip so it will sit nicely on my jewellery box. And I've actually cut another smaller piece exactly the same and I'm going to add that to the top of my lid just to add a little bit of an accent. Now I suggest with these that you do add some glue in. Because the sides are quite short, they are going to need to be reinforced with glue. You obviously don't want to glue the top to it, but you are going to want to glue the bottom and the sides. I would recommend just using a small bit of Gorilla Glue just along each of the joins. And then we can add this side in as well and as I say I do recommend just adding a small bit of Gorilla Glue just along each of the join areas. So this one's all now pieced together so now I can work on my lid so I'm just going to glue the outside of my lid and the inside of my lid and again I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue. So that's now glued and dried and as I say I cut out an exact another piece. I'm just going to turn my lid over and I'm then going to glue it onto the top. You don't have to do that. I just thought it'd be nice to add something a little bit different onto it just to kind of reinforce it as well but there's no need to add a second piece on the top. So I do need to add a handle onto this and I will do that a bit later. For now I'm just going to go and varnish it because it is wood and I do want to see the wood so I'm just going to go and varnish it. So we've then got our chipboard one and again it's all been worked out so everything fits together so you do only want to use it with the Cricut 2mm chipboard. So we've got our two long sides and our two short sides. We've got our bottom piece and then we've got our lid and then the piece that sits on our lid. Again I do recommend using some glue just because the sides are quite short and so you will want to obviously reinforce it with some glue. Again I recommend some Gorilla Glue. <music> Again with my lid I'm going to add some Gorilla Glue onto this so that I can then stick the smaller piece on top of it. So my glue's all dried and you can see that my box is all ready to be decorated. So again I'm going to add the handles and I'm going to put some feet on this one as well. I'm going to add them at the end. Now I want this to have a kind of antique feel to it. So I've got some of these Painters Touch uh, metallic finish paint. So I've got a silver, a gold and a bronze. I'm going to go in with just some makeup sponges and some brushes and just kind of mottle it on and give it a kind of oldie worldy look. So I've got this one looking the way I want and I've just got a door handle here and I'm just going to hot glue it onto the top and I may add some feet onto this one or the other one, I'm not quite sure yet. So I've just got my inserts, I've decorated those as well. So I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to slide them in and then you can get them exactly how you want them and you can play with it, you can have more inserts if you want you can kind of work out if you want some fabric in here, if you want some felt there's so much that you can do with these so this one is now varnished and I've added some felt in one of my insert areas and I've varnished on the inside as well and the inside of my lid now this part of the top of my lid I've actually left clear because I'm going to decoupage it. So I've just got some thin patterned paper here. I got this from Crafty Love and I will link to it below. I've got some glossy deco patch and I've got a sponge brush as well. So I'm just going to coat the top of my lid with my deco patch glossy varnish. I can then add my thin paper on top 
And if I've got any pieces that aren't quite stuck down, I can just go in with a little brush and just add some more of my Deca patch. I'm then going to let that dry. So I've got a third box here. This is another chipboard one. So you can see that I've spray painted the inside silver and I've done the same with the inserts. I've spray painted those silver as well. And then I've started to decorate the outside of my box. So I've got some deco patch papers here. I love, love working with these. We will do a proper tutorial on how you can work with them, how you can cut them on the machine. But with my maker, I cut them on the tissue paper setting using my rotary blade and they cut beautifully. So again, I've got my deco patch glossy and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to coat the whole area and I'm then just going to very gently just start laying it out I then like to go in with my roller and just secure it make sure there's no creases there's no air bubbles in there and we're then going to let that dry just like we did with the top of our other box before we go on to the next step. So now both of these are dry, I'm going to go back in with my Deca patch and just do a nice thin layer as evenly as possible and it will seal it all and it will just give it a nice glossy varnished finish.